due to the emotions that are that are running high in this in the county right now and, and the adjoining state. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to take any chances. Uh, these people need to have their day in court and and go from there. The suspects include Tiffany Adams, the mother of Butler's children, her boyfriend Tad Cullum, and two others. They're all reportedly linked to an anti-government religious group known as God's Misfits, a group said to follow its own laws. If that's the case, those laws seem to have admitted the Sixth Commandment, thou shalt not commit murder. Police say in the past 24 hours, the incriminating evidence has been piling up. Authorities confirmed yesterday that the two bodies found over the weekend were indeed those of the two missing mothers. They were discovered in a rural area about eight miles from their abandoned car on land that Cullum leased from the owner. Today, the victim's family members crowded into the courtroom, shouting at the suspects, even at one point lunging at them. News Nation's correspondent Brian Enton was there for it all, joins us live outside the courtroom. And Brian, it sounds like a very tense, wild scene. Yeah, it was tense. It was emotional, Elizabeth. It was really like a uh, hearing like I've never been to before. Starting outside, security was so tight. There was a police drone up. There were snipers on the roof. Uh, there were metal detectors outside in the parking lot, handheld metal detectors where they checked every single person. You couldn't bring in electronics. I couldn't even wear my hoodie inside. They made me take my hoodie off. Once inside the courtroom, it was a very, very small space. Uh, the last two rows were filled with the victim's family members, about two dozen uh, of them or so. And when the suspects came in, uh, they were very, very angry and emotional. And they were saying things out loud that you could hear in the courtroom. I wrote some of these things down. When suspect Cole Trumbly came in, uh, Veronica's dad audibly called him a bastard. When uh, Tad Cullum came in, uh, he said, sorry, ass, piece of you know what? Uh, and when Grandma Tiffany came in, uh, he said, effing B, who killed my daughter. Uh, and then they actually had to restrain him. His family members had to hold him back, hold Veronica's dad back, because he was trying to lunge towards the suspects. All of this happening as the hearing uh, was underway. Uh, we sp spoke to Veronica's aunt outside uh, right afterwards. Take a listen. First of all, I'm so sorry for everything you've been through. And it, just that courtroom was so small. I can't imagine you, you guys were just so close to them. I mean, what was that like? You know, to to hold my brother back from jumping, you know, um, there's just too many emotions, so much anger. Um, I just, I don't understand how somebody can hate somebody so much that you want to kill him. My niece did not deserve that, and neither did the young lady with her. She was just there to help her. We didn't deserve this. <laughs> So all of that was happening inside Elizabeth. And then when we came outside, there was a large crowd out in the parking lot, including suspect Tad Cullum's uh, sister, who started shouting that he would never hurt a woman. Uh, so you can just imagine emotions on both sides. Again, I've never really seen anything like that in a courtroom before, Elizabeth. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Uh, also, yesterday on this show, you had an interview with a local judge who was friendly with one of the suspects who's been arrested and charged with murder, was shocked at those developments. Turns out he got fired today because he spoke to, spoke to you? Yeah, it was shocking. Judge Vincent Forbes, he's a judge here uh, in Kansas, where we are, near where the murders happened. The, the, the court hearing and the court case is all the way in Texas County, Oklahoma. So he has nothing to do with the case. He did know one of the suspects. He spoke to us. He calls us last night and says, listen, after your interview aired, uh, the city council forced me to resign. They were so unhappy that I spoke out about all of this. I just went back to the judge's house uh, to find out what happened. Take a listen. I was sitting here in the house, and I got a phone call. There was a city council meeting last night. And they said, you need to come over here. So I went over there. It's only a block. I walked over. And uh, I went in, and they were in executive session. Uh, when it was over, three or four minutes, they called me in, sat down, and they said, uh, We've had a lot of static about your interview. And we don't like it. The mayor has absolute control over my job. I'm appointed. He can hire me or fire me. And I said, well, just fire me. 
one of the councilmen popped up and said, oh, you're going to turn in your resignation. He's very nasty about it. I, I didn't appreciate that. And I said, that's not a problem. I'll quit. You remember, Elizabeth, he talked to us yesterday about the cult group God's Misfits, what he had heard about them, also the fact that he knew the suspect, uh, and apparently they weren't happy he was talking about it. It just goes to show why everyone is so nervous to talk around here. There's intimidation. The suspects were powerful. They owned thousands of acres of land. Um, you know, you look at their pictures, you might not realize it, but they were powerful, mm -hmm. influential people in this area, Elizabeth. Yeah, and all along we've been reporting, even before they made the arrests, before we discovered the bodies, there was a lot of fear around this grandmother. Uh, people just were very afraid to speak out about this family. I guess we're seeing now a little evidence of that. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.